So good morning, everyone. Thank you very much for joining me on today's webinar. Maybe before we start about today's webinar, please note that April, uh, we have a few webinars uh, planned for you, starting with today's seminar uh, about uh, the integration we did with uh, Tyco Johnson Control Alarm System, which are Visonic and DSC alarm system. Uh, we have another seminar coming up next week on Thursday, uh, next week, Provision SR new solar camera. Uh, so make sure to join us. And then April 18, the Provision SR new intercom system. So make sure to register. If you haven't received uh, the invitation or you don't know how to register, send us an email and we'll make sure to send you the information. So our today seminar. Today's seminar is about our integration with uh, Johnson Control, and that is the integration with DSC alarm system and Visonic alarm system to have one app that control it all, controlling provision ISR, controlling DSC alarm system, and controlling Visonic alarm system. Before we explain the, about the integration itself, I want to tell you a little bit about the market scenario as we know it today. Let's see a little bit about what's happening right now and what is the main problem and what is the reason for this integration. So from one side, as you all know, we have the alarm manufacturer. The alarm manufacturer producing alarm sensor detectors, which is sending alerts to the alarm system, to the panel. And then through the cloud, it's being sent to the alarm manufacturer app, to the end user app. From the other side, we have the CCTV manufacturer producing CCTV cameras, which always send events to the NVR and through it to the cloud, sending a push notification or, or alerts to the end user. Eventually we have the end user that has basically two different apps, one for CCTV and from the, from one for the alarm. So the result is that when he get push notification from the CCTV app. He opened the video feed and he can see and investigate the, inv the event. On the other hand, when he's getting a push notification from the alarm system, usually it's just an alert that telling him, okay, there is an alarm going on right now. And usually what he needs to do, he needs to open the CCTV app to see and investigate the event. And this is a problem because he has two apps too many. So this is the first solution actually came from the alarm manufacturer. All the alarm manufacturers at some points made some kind of a solution. Uh, they provided video verification. This was the demand coming from their customer. Okay, we've got alarm, but we need to see what's going on. It's not enough that we get the alert. We need to see some kind of a video verification. As how they did it, they provided three optional solution. Some manufacturers, first of all, they did the integration with the video manufacturers. Um, and the result was one of the three. And that depends from manufacturer to manufacturer. Some of them provided snap video images from a nearby camera, just a snapshot, one, two snapshots from a nearby camera. Some of them provided a full video clip, five seconds, two seconds, Again, from a designed nearby camera, from a set up nearby camera. Some of the manufacturer even took it a little bit forward and actually provided the option to open a live feed, not only getting a snapshot or a short video clip, but actually to provide some kind of a live feed from a nearby camera. So they allowed you to stream a specific camera using a OnViv protocol or RTSP protocol or any kind of protocol to provide the end user from the alarm app to be able to open a video channel, a specific video channel. So those were the solutions that most of the alarm manufacturers provided and most of the alarm manufacturers do have today. But the big question is, was it enough? And obviously the answer is no. And the reason is, is because event investigation require much more than just a snapshot or a video clip or even a live video feed from a camera. 
uh, event investigation, when we have a real event going on and the alarm is sending us alerts, we need access to all camera to be able to navigate between cameras. Yes, maybe the alert came from my backyard, but I want to see what's going on in the living room or it came from the back door of the office and I want to see what's going on in my server room, which is the most important room in my facility. So I need to have access to all camera. I need to have easy search navigators. I need to be able to navigate between time bars to scroll back and forward to zoom in in timelines in order to be much more accurate and fast on my event investigation. Now, let's see what happened in the CCTV market while the online manufacturer did all of that. The CCTV market, as we all know, already shifts from post-event investigation to pre-event alerts. In the, back, in the past, the CCTV system was designed only for post-event investigation. And today we see more and more pre-event alerts. Uh, the add-ons of AI features, the ability to distinguish between human, cars, and even attributes such as colors, maker of cars, and so on, allow us to add more and more features uh, such as line crossing, stereo area, and to get alert before the event even occur, before somebody is entering our backyard, before somebody is entering the, day, the door, thanks to many type of analytics. And regardless of that, of that the CCTV market has become to bring to the end user in his app daily operation, such as LPR management, the ability to add license plate into the database, the ability to add and to manage my face database, to take snapshots from the app and add them to the NVRs, to do object counting and get alerts about it. You all know these features. So the CCTV market ran much faster when it comes to video, thanks to the ability that we have video and we can analyze what's going on in the video. So the CCTV app became a tool basically for the end user, not for only for getting alerts and do event, event, event investigation, but more of a control tool, which is based on video with many activities that you can do there. So where is Provision ISR in this scenario between what's going on in the alarm market versus what's going on in Provision ISR and CCTV in specifically? First of all, you should know that Provision ISR no, have no intention to go into the alarm market products. We have no intention on producing alarm sensors and uh, alarm systems and so, on, and so on. On the other hand, we do have a uh, uh, desire to do with alarm manufacturers. Why? Because we want to give the freedom for the installer to choose which alarm system. Alarm system, from our experience, is something that once the alarm, manuf uh, the alarm installer learned to use, he usually stick to it very much. He loved the interface, he loved the way it's being done, he loved the way it's being controlled, and he's going with one or two alarm systems. We don't want to force him. We see other manufacturers that did similar things. We don't want to force him to buy alarm system only from Provision ISR because this, it will only work with Provision ISR app. We want to give them the ability and the freedom to choose his alarm uh, system vendor. And this is why we decided to do integration with alarm manufacturers. First in line is Johnson Control. And Johnson Control, as you may know, holding two alarm manufacturers. One is DSC, the Canadian one, and the second one is Visonic, previous Israeli one. And they have a good market share in different countries. Of course, we are about to do more integration with more alarm systems, alarm manufacturers that will allow us to do such integration. But the first in, one, in line is Johnson Control with DSC and Visonic. So now that we understand the problem, we can talk about what has been done and how does it look. So what has been done? Basically, we did an integration with Alarms uh, Johnson Control, but let's see how does Johnson Control work and how does it work. So as we said, 
Johnson Control has two alarm systems, Visonic alarm system and DSC alarm system. Both these systems basically communicate with their uh, cloud system. They have two type of cloud. Doesn't matter if you are a DSC or Visonic distributor or an integrator, you should know how it works because you will be able to, you will be required to explain how it works. So you should know that Visonic has a cloud name, visonic.tycomonitor.com, and DSC has connect.tycomonitor.com. But anywhere, anyway, the cloud system of Tyco or Johnson Control is the name is Power Manager. And they have two alarms, two apps. One, they have the app which is called Alarm Install. This app is designed only for the installer, not for the end user. It's only for the installer. And basically, the installer will use it on the day of the installation and only on the day of the installation. This is where he will do most of his initial settings the alarm configuration, the zone configuration, the communication, which communication protocol he's going to use, and so on, and so on, and so on. Again, the installers of DSC and Visonic are using this app, and only this app. And again, it's only for the day of the installation. <laughs> the, the other app uh, Johnson Control is, is uh, introducing is Connect Alarm. This app is for the end user. This is the app that any end user that is having DSC alarm system or Visonic alarm system in his house, in his office, in his premises, this is the app that he's going to use, Connect Alarm. And this is where he's going to do most of this daily operation. Arm, disarm, the entire alarm system, specific zones. This is where he will get his alerts. Uh, this is the app that we saw in the beginning of this presentation. When he's getting alerts, this is where he will get his push notification. This is where he's going to get alerts about uh, low batteries in the detectors, about malfunctions, about any anything that is going on in his alarm system. OK, so two, two apps. And this is the most used app, actually, by the end users. What Provision ISR did is very, very simple. Basically, we are replacing the Connect Alarm app with Provision ISR CAM2 app. We basically consolidate the entire Connect Alarm application into the Provision ISR CAM application. Everything that the end user can do here in the Connect Alarm app, he can now do on the Provision ISR CAM2 app. Plus, we created, we give the, the end user the ability to create scenarios between sensors and camera streams in a very easy way. Okay? So to explain what type of integration we did is very simple. Once you understand that there are two apps, one for the installer and one for the end user, all you need to understand that basically we consolidate the Connect Alarm app, the end user level app, into Provision ISR CAM2 app, all the features. So how is basically it's being done? On one side, we have the alarm system with the sensors that is basically sending alerts to the power manager, the cloud of Tyco. And from the other side, we have Provision ISR equipment, cameras, and NVR sending notification to Provision ISR cloud. Both this cloud are now communicating with Provision ISR CAM2 app. As simple as that. And all the logical connection between the alarm sensor and the camera is being done and saved on the phone itself. OK? So all the settings, all the relationship, all the combination between sensors and camera, everything is done by the end user on his app. He doesn't need to connect to any cloud or to the alarm system or to the NVR. Everything is being done on the app itself. So let's see a little bit of how does it work. We did prepare a movie for you that you can use in your seminars, in your training, and so on, uh, that basically shows uh, the main features of what's being done with this app. Uh, sorry, I'm going to mute this audio.
So again, we have one app to control them all. And we're basically, in this movie, you will see three different parts. For one is a one-time setup. When we want to connect a alarm system to provision ISR CAM2, there are one-time setup that we need to Where is it? That is to log into the Tyco cloud system. We will do it through this new icon that we have, alarm system. Once we click it, we can either, if we already have an account in Tyco Cloud, in Johnson Control Cloud, great. If we want to use the Provision ISR CAM2 account, we can do that. If we want to open a new account, we can do that as well. In this example, we're going to use a, an account that me as a user already have. I'm all, I already have the app of uh, Johnson Control, the Alarm Connect app, and I already have a system, DSC system in this example. And uh, I want to open this account here and provision it. So I'm going to just enter my details, my email, my uh, password, and so on, which cloud I'm using. And I'm, I'm going to log into my account. Now I'm inside my account. Next, specific, in this example, a specific DSC system. So again, new icon. Alarm system, you will see the house, the small house. And here I'm able to add a new DSC panel. So I'm clicking plus. You see, it's very similar to our server list. Just giving a name, DSC and provision ISR with the, they have a special code and a password that I need to put in, connect. And once I'm I done it, that's it, a new panel. And now I can log into it. And once I'm inside, I'm basically inside the panel. Password, of course. And I'm inside the panel. I can do whatever I want to do inside the panel. This screen that you see here is basically uh, will be a, a very similar, will, will be a, something very familiar for, a, for the user that is already using DSC alarm system because he's familiar with this app. He knows how to do away, night, uh, alarms, troubleshootings, any kind of uh, features that he wants. We will go through some of them. But let's see the part two. This is combining between a CCTV camera and an alarm sensor if we wish to. We want to bind the camera to an alarm sensor. Let's see how we do it. So let's say we want to connect this camera. So we go to the alarm devices. Here I have all my alarm system. I'm connecting to this new DSC panel that we just added. I can click to see all my sensor, all my alarm detectors. Those are my alarm detectors. And here in those three docs, I can click find channel. And then I can any channel from any CCTV system that I have. It can be even a CCTV in a different country or in a different place. It doesn't matter. I want to associate, what I want to do is to associate a specific a, a video channel to this specific sensor. I can take from any uh, CCTV system. That... So I'm choosing my camera and that's it. This is the whole progress, the whole process. And I just bind the channel. Now, what does it mean? I will arm my system. And now, in case my alarm sensor one is being triggered, the push is being arrived to the provision cam two. Again, it's a push that came from the alarm sensor. And I can choose whether I want to do live or playback, whatever I want to do. I can, by the way, open it automatically. It's a matter of settings. I can have the system open it automatically. In this case, we chose to show you that you can go to live, you can go to playback. And again, once you're inside the playback, you can go to any other channel. You're in the provision ISR interface of search. You can go to other channel. You can navigate through the bar. You can do whatever you want. And of course, all the other settings that are available for the end user on the alarm system, he can do from the provision ISR app system now. He can easily arm and disarm his system. 
<clears throat> of course, once he's inside the system, everything that he's usually doing, he can do as well. For example, you can see all the devices on his alarm system, including which channel he already pined a video into them. He can name them. You can see all the output and activate the output on the alarm system. Guys, explain. Those aren't the alarm panel itself. He has output. He can activate those out the provision SR app. You can see all the event screen that is used to see uh, alarms, failures, uh, low batteries, and specific devices that he needs to replace. Uh, any any kind of uh, alerts that he wants to get. He has full setup of the system. He can decide when he would like to get a notification, whether an email or a push, and what type of notification he would like to get. The end user, of course, can also decide that he would like to add user into his alarm system or remove specific users from his alarm system. He can do that from provision cam to app now. He can build a new user if you want. Of course, you can change the panel date and time. He can even give one of the features that uh, Johnson Control have is to give ability to the installer to get access to his system from remote. You can do that as well. So again, we have one app to control them all. That's the beauty of this uh, integration. I hope I managed to explain it all. Continue on to our uh, little bit more. When you talk with uh, about alarm and CCTV, Naturally, what we did is just the beginning of the integration, because now that you have integration from the alarm side, uh, naturally, you can also connect the alarm system physically to the NVR and get much more variety of abilities. We can have a trigger coming from the alarm system and decide that we are uh, sending a push audio message to a speaker. We activate it specific cameras or recording other cameras, the sky is the limit. When alarm and CCTV meet, basically the user can expand these alarm system abilities by the CCTV system create much more scenarios. And again, let's not forget when we talk with alarm manufacturers to, to remind them about the different analytics that are coming from the CCTV key system. As, as you know, today provision ISR Offer, offer endless amount of analytics, including uh, the recent loitering and illegal parking and audio exceptions and more and more and more. So once they are inside the video, naturally the sky is the limit with the analytics. So which product lines are being integrated in this integration? So from provision ISR side, basically when we talk about IP camera or DVR and NVR, doesn't really matter. Basically, as I said, the integration has been done on the app side. Therefore, when they ask you which kind of equipment should I buy, it doesn't really matter. Any IP camera, any DVR, any NVR, the integration hasn't been done on the hardware side of Provision ISR. It's been done on the app side and the cloud. Therefore, any equipment the customer will choose, yes, is under this integration. And on Johnson Control side, you have the names of the equipment that is being integrated. This is only the type of alarm system that is working with their cloud. Again, guys, we're talking about the system here that is being sold by from uh, Johnson Control for the last uh, five, six years. So by Sonic Power Master Panel family, DSC Power Series Neo family, and DSC Power Series Pro. So any kind of alarm system from those families is part of this integration. And you can control it from provision SR cam to app. Um, at the end of this seminar, you will get the presentation as well, including the recording of the seminar. 
there is a Johnson control contact list here for you to, in your different territories, uh, whether you are from Europe or from Africa. Um, why? Because of cooperation that you can do with them. Uh, just to tell you a little bit, we are, we already, just to tell you a bit what we have done so far with this integration, as far as Johnson control. We made the seminar to all Johnson control salespeople around the world. Every salesperson that is listed here and their employees has been to this seminar. They've seen the integration, they know what it is about, and they are very excited about it. And why? Because it, they understand that if there is an installer that is using DSCO or Visonic alarm system, you should definitely start and buying provisionized RCCTV system because this, this installer can now give to his end user a serious benefit that basically can recommend them to start using provision ISR CAM2 app and by that controlling the alarm system and the CCTV system. So the salespeople of Johnson Control are really excited about this. And we already start uh, joint meetings in different territories between Johnson Control employees and provision ISR representative to start and do events together, introducing specific customers together and go and to meet them and to show them provision ISR product line and features and app, of course, and explain them about this integration. So I think each one and every one of you should definitely contact those people. All of them know about this integration. All of them are excited about in this integration. The one that we already met brought serious leads and potential opportunities, business opportunities that can seriously enjoy this integration. And most of them already have on their phone better version of this uh, of the app to see how it works and to play with it. And they gave us a few feedbacks that we are improving now and more features that they would like to have. And we are working on them as well. So this is why we have this page for you. Uh, marketing wise, in the beginning of this seminar, you saw a movie about it. So we have a movie with a link here for you that you can use. And there is a nice leaflet about the integration that explain what is the integration and what is it about and so on that you can use as well. You have the beta version. You have a link uh, for the iOS for iPhone with a test flight. If you have a test flight account, you can install the beta version on your phone and you can demo it to your installers. Also, we have a beta version. The final version uh, will be released to the market believe by the beginning of May. So you have about a month to prepare yourself. First of all, to learn more about this integration and to start to communicate with Johnson Control employees to see where you can uh, maybe find a similar uh, sub-distributors or installers that you can uh, introduce this integration to. And definitely you should uh, have the beta version on your phone uh, so you can play with it. We do recommend that you get a hands uh, on your uh, on your uh, uh, showroom uh, DSC panel or a Visonic panel so you can demonstrate part of it. Talk with the local representative of Johnson Control. I'm sure they will be happy to arrange a sample for you. That's it. Uh, thank you very much for joining. And I hope we managed to explain the integration and the benefit of it. And thank you very much for joining. Hope to see you in our next seminar.